almost ready to run our model, but we need to make a few more tweaks just to uh, make sure that our model um, is, you know, following our assumptions. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of this turn on ideal air loads for the mechanical room. So all the ideal air loads means is it's actually going to calculate the um, heating and cooling need for the spaces um, in, in an ideal, um, without any HVAC system, just in an ideal uh, model. So the mechanical room doesn't isn't conditioned, so that's why we're going to turn that off. The next thing we're going to do is we're only going to bring in 5 CFM per person in our example. So we're going to go to our space types here, and we're going to change the um, outdoor airflow per person to 5 cubic feet per minute per, per, um, per person. So, and you can see that we're going to we're going to do that for all of our spaces. The other thing to notice is that in the office, there's no outdoor airflow per floor area, but in the restroom there is. So that's just um, to ventilate the restroom, um, you know, so, since we want to bring in fresh air to the restroom. Okay, so now we're, we've made those two little tweaks. We're going to go ahead and run our model. So we just go to this little play button down here, and we hit run. So this can take... Um, Sometimes, sometimes. With a small model like this, it shouldn't take too long. Um, and it shows you what it's doing, um, but it gives you much more information that you, than you would ever need um, while it's actually running the model. Um, but, but it's good to see that it's actually doing something, so that way it's going through. Um, and once the model's finished, the big thing, warnings are okay, but errors are what you really don't want. So as long as you don't have any errors, then you're good to go. And you want to look at your results tab. So um, for this case, we're just looking for the heating and cooling load. So um, and and really, what we want to know is since when we did it by hand, really what we were trying to calculate was we were trying to calculate the size of our heating unit and the size of our AC unit. So we can actually get that under um, zone overview. And um, if we go to zone cooling and heating size. Then we can really get to here how big our zone heating and cooling size is. So um, this gives us like, the calculated design load and then the design load with the sizing factor. And all the sizing factor is is um, just like a safety factor, basically. So you're just increasing it by a certain percentage to oversize it just a little bit, so that way you make sure that it actually will meet um, those, those tougher times. Um, especially if some of your assumptions weren't exactly correct. Okay, so you can see that we have cooling and heating for the bathrooms for the east office and the west office. Um, the other thing that might be a little bit more, so this is just ideal air loads. Um, what I would recommend to make it a little bit more, um, you know, actual true to life is just to put in, um, so that way it's not ideal conditions, we'll put in just a um, HVAC systems to serve um, this area, uh, or these three areas. So what I would recommend is that we just make three packaged rooftop units, the easiest thing we can have, and they have cooling. Um, it's just a heat pump for cooling and then natural gas. And we're going to add that to our model. And then we're going to basically go to our thermal zones and make one of these for each thermal zone, except for the mechanical room. So we'll do the bathrooms first. So that's going to be just packaged rooftop air conditioner. Then we're going to make another one. And then we're going to go back to our thermal zones and do east office. And then we're going to go back and go back to our thermal zones and go to west office. So now the other the way you can check this, if you go to your thermal zones, everything but the uh, mechanical room should have a packaged rooftop air conditioner. And since we gave it um, an HVAC system, it actually turned off ideal air loads for us. Okay, so let's go ahead and run it again. This is just going to give us a little bit better indication of our um, of our design conditions since we're actually applying it to a real um, HVAC system instead of just an ideal air loads um, model. So again, we let the model run, um, and it runs rather quickly for those smaller buildings, um, and it can hopefully it won't give us any warnings. Okay, so now let's go back to our output results, 
and go back down to the zone overview. And now we have the zone cooling and heating size. So basically, if you wanted the full heating load, is you would add up, without, without adding in the safety factor, you'd add up the 1.93 plus the 9.87 plus the 9.88 for the heating. And for the cooling, you would add up the 0 0.13 tons, 1.14 tons, and 1.21 tons. And then you can compare that with the heating and cooling load you got um, by hand. Okay, that's all for this video. Um, thanks for watching.